This message comes from Rock of Ages Lutheran Church in Payson, Arizona, reaching out with Rock Solid Hope in Rim Country. May 2nd, 2021, John 15, 1 to 8. Have you ever tried growing a grapevine? I've done it before and found good measure of success, but I've not tried it yet in Payson. So last week I decided to try planting some grapevines. So I looked into what it takes to grow them. And as it turns out, they can grow just about anywhere. It's pretty simple. You just need some sunshine, adequate soil, and some water. Pretty simple. So I planted them, and I guess the only ingredient left is some patience. And we'll see. Well, what about growing fruits of faith? What does it take? Is it easy? Well, this morning we continue looking at our series Connected to Christ as we just see how Jesus describes how he produces fruits of faith. And yes, they grow everywhere in the world. And we see how it's done as we look at God's word in John chapter 15. First of all, Jesus describes himself by saying, I am the true vine. That is, from God's perspective, when when God looks at Jesus, he alone is the true vine, that is, the source of spiritual strength and spiritual life. And yes, it, it might appear at times like there are other sources of strength and spiritual life, but they're not the true vine, as far as God is concerned. This is the only one which we can find real and lasting life. And of course, when you consider that, that Jesus says, I am the true vine, my father is the gardener. There are also going to be sources of spiritual strength which are not true and which do not belong in God's garden, the false vines. And yes, this sadly will happen as there will be people looking to give spiritual strength as they merely affirm sinful natures and say, you are good. And they try to give people strength by telling them, if you just follow the desires of your heart and make themselves a vine, that somehow they'll be strong. These false vines are the ones who try to strengthen people to their own praise and to their own glory, not the praise of God and his strength. So Jesus describes for us what his father's garden, as the gardener, looks like and what it means to be connected to the true vine. He says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he's going to cut off. And he prunes every branch that does bear fruit, so it will bear more fruit. That to be connected to the, the true vine and to be under the true gardener, the one and only, means there will be cutting off of that which is dead. The law of God cuts the heart. And yes, there is judgment from a holy God who sees what is dead. God looks at sinners who by nature are dead, and they cannot be a part of him. And those which want to make their way into his garden and be a part of his garden, he will in judgment cut off as dead vines. The true gardener cuts off what is dead. And even if you are producing fruit and you are connected to the vine and have life, don't think things are going to go so easy. He says, every branch that does bear fruit will be pruned. Maybe you've noticed this as you live out your Christian life. I just the other day heard a Christian saying, well, I've I've served God in my life and I've lived for my God. Why am I facing this? The true gardener prunes. He doesn't merely self-affirm the sinful nature and our hearts. He prunes, he disciples his crop, his harvest. So there'll be times when that discipling comes into a Christian's life, when it's coming through God's word. Maybe a Christian will be pruned as they're cut to the heart, as they look in the word of God, or as a faithful Christian church connected to the vine preaches and teaches, rebukes, corrects, encourages, trains, disciples. One who is connected to the true vine will sometimes have to face that. And maybe that pruning can also come as the gardener sends us hardships and trials. The writer to the Hebrews says, God disciplines those he loves. 
If we are pruned, that is, if we're facing some sort of setback or some hardship in our life, we know God is using that not to cause us to fall away, but to strengthen us who trust in him, to all the more look to the vine and find strength and rely on our God. He prunes us. So to be connected to the the true vine does involve discipline, does involve pruning. Well, maybe at this point, some of you might be wondering, well, am I one who bears fruit? Am Am I connected to the vine? Do I belong? I've got good news for you. What Jesus says here, he tells his disciples, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. The word here in Greek for clean is actually related to that word which we read earlier for prune. In other words, Jesus is saying, you're already fit for my kingdom. You already belong in my vineyard. It's not because of what we have done but rather what our God has given us. You are connected to Christ by his word and through faith. He says, you are already part of my vineyard because of the word I have spoken to you. It is the gospel that makes you connected to Christ. And by that gospel, you belong to the vine, your source of spiritual strength, the one you look to for power and for life. I know that we might have that connection to our Lord in order that we might find strength connected to him, Jesus, the, the true vine, came to be our strength. He himself, the Son of God, came down to this earth. And yes, he was living and dying as the vine, hung on a dead tree and placed in the ground like a seed. But by doing this, The vine paid the price for every dead deed worked out by the flesh. The vine himself became our source of life, the living vine, as he rose again from the grave. And so that God might have a harvest in his kingdom, Jesus, the Son of God, proclaims forgiveness as he takes away every dead branch, every sin, and he himself took it for us so that we might forever live with him, the source of our life and forgiveness, and also the source of new life right now. So what does Jesus tell us as those who are connected to the vine? He says, remain in me. Notice Jesus doesn't say, become part of me. He's done that through his gospel. He's called us to faith and made us connected to him. We find our strength as we trust in him. Nor does Jesus say, invite me into your heart. No, he says, remain in me. You are in Christ as you trust in him. And yes, we may not have the strength to graft ourselves, as Paul describes in Romans 9, that we graft ourselves on to God, but he has brought us to himself. And now he tells you, remain in me. The one spiritual strength that we do have is the work of the flesh to disconnect ourselves from our God, to no longer be trusting or relying on him, but finding our own spiritual strength. Sometimes this will happen as a Christian might say, well, I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm living a good life. Or a Christian parent might say regarding their children, well, they may not be connected to their church or much connected with God's word and sacrament, but at least they're still good people. And maybe they might not be too concerned because they're getting good grades and they're holding down a job. They're producing fruit. What's wrong? Well, Jesus says, if they don't remain in him, all that fruit is worthless. He says, a branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Likewise, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. All the good deeds that a person does, no matter how good they might be, all amount to nothing if it's not done connected to Christ and through faith in him. You can donate a million dollars to build a large institution that will benefit society. You can be a person who dedicates all of your time and life and energy. But the scriptures say it's all done to the praise of self and the glory of self, and none of it is acceptable before God. It is fruit that is bitter, and it is fruit that comes from a bitter root of sin. It's what the prophet Isaiah says when he mentions, all of our righteous acts, they're like filthy rags. 
we see that what the writer of the Hebrews says is true here. Without faith, that is without connection to Christ, it is impossible to please God. So Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. And not only that, but God considers us dead apart from Christ. And he says, for the one who is connecting with their own strength and the strength of this world and producing good fruit, he says, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. The only thing, brothers and sisters, a person is fit for without faith in Christ is to receive their due praise for their works. And that leads to God's judgment, punishment, death, and hell. But take heart, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. You don't find your strength in yourself. You find your strength in your God, in Christ, your Redeemer and your Savior, your living God. And he says, remain in me and I am going to remain in you. He will never abandon those who trust in him, who are connected to him through faith. And yes, you, he says, not should bear fruit. It's not bearing fruit that makes you a believer. He says, you will bear fruit. Before we conclude, I, I need to explain what it means to bear fruit. Bearing fruit is not what some might think, where you come to church and you're involved with some activity or program only at church. No, bearing fruit is found in every aspect of your life. You bear fruit as you do what the Apostle Paul describes as the the fruit of the Spirit. Joy, peace, love, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Bearing fruit doesn't mean that you have to convert a million souls for Christ. Bearing fruit is simply anything, even giving a small cup of water to someone in Christ's name. Bearing fruit shows itself in love, as you express kindness to those around you and bear with them patiently. You bear fruit connected to Christ as you see his great love and patience for you and show that to this world. You bear fruit as you live and share the joy that you found in forgiveness in Christ. You bear fruit as you change an attitude of the heart and your hands work for Christ. It's pretty simple. It's actually pretty easy. God's direction. It doesn't take much to bear fruit, does it? Remain in Christ. Remain in his love. The only ingredients you need are the light of the world and connection to the vine. And he will work that new life as you look to his goodness, his love, his kindness, his gentleness, his patience, his self-control that gives you life. And there's more. Jesus throws in, not only will you bear fruit as you trust in him, but your prayers will be fruitful. He says, if you remain in me, ask anything and it will be given to you. Fruitful prayers along with fruitful works because of the spiritual power which is Christ and the gospel. All not for self, not for praise of self. No, he says here at the end, As we read in verse 8, My Father is glorified by this, that you continue to bear much fruit. In the end, you and I will be standing before the throne of our God. And we will not be boasting in self. We will not be looking to our own self-strength. We'll be looking to the vine, the true vine, who gave us life, who strengthened us, and through us bore fruit, all to the praise and glory of God. You are connected to the vine. Amen.